What's up, spiritual gangsters? This your OGs, Treese and Rain. Welcome to another episode of Tri Vibes. So let's get into it. So today we're going to be discussing, uh, we're actually going to be reading and discussing an article that I read not too long ago. The article was super dope. Um, I actually found it on aish.com. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. A-I-S-H. And it's the Aish Ha Torah Israel Programs. The name of the article is called Path of the Soul Number Three Gratitude by Alan Morinus. And Rain's going to start us off. There's a story, maybe an urban legend, but full of truth nonetheless, concerning the famous violinist Ishak Perlman. One evening, Perlman was in New York to give a concert. As a child, he had been stricken with polio, and getting on stage is no small feat for him. He wears braces on both legs and walks with two crutches. Perlman crossed the stage painfully slowly until he reached the chair in which he seated himself to play. As soon as he appeared on stage that night, the audience applauded and then waited respectfully as he made his way slowly across the stage. He took his seat, signaled the constructor, son of a bitch, <coughs> the conductor, <laughs> and began to play. No son of a bitch, finished- I omit, was not a part of the article. <laughs> I just had to put that out there. (laughs) We know. (laughs) No sooner had he finished the first few bars than one of the strings of his violin snapped with a report like gunshot. At that point, Perlman was close enough to the beginning of the piece that it would be, it would have been reasonable to bring the concert to a halt while he replaced the string to begin again. But that's not what he did. He waited a moment and then signaled the conductor to pick up just where they had left off. Perlman now only had three strings with which to play his soloist part. He was able to find some of the missing notes on adjoining strings, but there, but where that wasn't possible, he had to rearrange the music on the spot in his head so that it all still held together. He played with passion and artistry, spontaneously rearranging the symphony right through to the end. When he finally rested his bow, the audience sat for a moment in stunned silence, and then they rose to their feet and cheered widely. They knew they had been witness to an extraordinary display of human skill and ingenuity. Perlman raised his bow to signal for quiet. You know, he said, sometimes it is the artist's task to find out how much beautiful music you can make with what you have left. We have to wonder, was he speaking of his violin strings or scribbled body? And is it true only for artists? Are we all lacking something? And so, are we all challenged to answer the question, do we have the attitude to make something of beauty out of what we do have, incomplete as it may be? Yes. I like that so much. Like, that shit was dope. And then to even that happening where his strings, like, you know, just broke apart, and then he continued, makes you, well, really shows the world how true of an artist you really are outside of practicing outside of, you know, doing things that are predictable in the notes that you have set to play, you know, how adaptable you are. I think that that adaptability is more about the person because it's the person that makes the artist. It's not the art that makes the person exactly it's it's the ingenuity and how your brain works right so the the being able to say okay this is what i have i'm gonna make a masterpiece out of three strings i'm gonna make a work of art out of uh old paint i'm gonna take this old can and whatever i mean there's an artist that i follow um his name escapes me at the moment oh patrick patrick Dower, Dower. He takes uh, recycled cans that he finds on the street, stuff that are often discarded, and paints on them such stuff that's it, it's held in wide regard. It's in museums and stuff. So it's it's that artist mindset and that thing to see things one way and be able to change it, to take what you have and be able to make art and beauty out of it. I like that, and I think that's the beauty of 
just being an artist in general, whether you play music or you do art, the fact that you can take what you have, no matter, it can be like what you said, somebody else's trash and you find the beauty in it and you make it for what it is. Or you really just shift people perspective with the things that you have, you know, it's like you're transmuting what you have in order to make something that other people either hear or, or feels beautiful. I, and that I shit love is that dope. because it's at the end of the story, it poses the question, you know, do we basically, are we as humans able to do the same thing to take whatever we have and look at it with beauty and wonder, basically? Right. Are we able to see past what's in front of us into what's possible, I guess? Right. Because they, they even say, you know, at the end, they said, we have to wonder, was he speaking of the violin strings or his crippled body? The fact that although he was born a cripple, he still made beauty out of what he had left, you know, and people revered him for it. Like he was still, he made such good use of what he had. He was able, even as a cripple, to walk on stage and still be revered. Standing ovation just by simply making it to the stage. Right. And then on top of that, something happening again, the strings breaking, which is kind of like a funny, you know, metaphor probably for his life. You know, I guess that's why they posed the question at the end. And then for him to even take advantage of that is kind of an homage to like probably him and everything he's ever been through in his life because he was a cripple. Yeah. You know, well, the fact uh, having... that he can take whatever and continue on and still make the best out of it or even something even more beautiful than what it would have been, even with it being broken. Absolutely. I think having coming, having to come from adversity especially like early on in your life, in your childhood, having to overcome so much, just, you know, that's how your mind thinks. How else can I do this? What can I do with what I have? Which basically is what the article is about, is taking what you have and making the best out of it. Right. And then the article continues and it says, the Hebrew term for gratitude is hikarat havak. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. I really hope I am. <laughs> Hatov. Hatov. Yeah. Which literally means recognizing the good. Practicing gratitude means recognizing the good that is already yours. If you lost your job, but you still have your family and health, and you have something to be grateful for. If you can't move around except in a wheelchair, but your mind is as sharp as ever, you have something to be grateful for. If you have a broken string on your violin and you still have three more, you have something to be grateful for. When you open up to a trait of gratitude, you see clearly and accurately how much good there is in your life. Gratitude affirms those things you are lacking are still there. And in reaching for gratitude, no one is saying you ought to put on rose colored glasses to obscure those shortcomings. But most of us tend to focus so heavily on the deficiencies in our lives that we barely perceive the good that counterbalances them. So I really like how they continued with the article with that, because that's just basically like a grand reflection on everything we just heard in the story. The fact that in life sometimes, especially when a lot of bad happens to you at once, you kind of get consumed by it and you think, oh, everything is so bad and I'm lacking this and I'm lacking that, that sometimes you don't see all the blessings that you have. And sometimes it's just a little shift in your perspective, not saying you have to ignore or the bad, but just shifting your perspective to think more on the good that is happening in your life can help give you the tools to not only move on and make the most out of everything, but make it even better and take those adversities that you have in life and make it even better than what it would have been before. You know? I like that. It reminds me of that saying, um, I believe it was Bob Marley, who me alone, <laughs> who said, some people see 
the rain, or some people stand in the rain, and some people only get wet. There's, there's people who view the exactly there's people who view the situation for what it is the rain water from the sky it's replenishing the earth it's cooling the earth it's you know what i mean refilling up the lakes all that stuff and then there's people who just see the inconvenience of it so right. it's looking at the situation and counting your blessings which is um on the on the in, full article that's something that they they mention that they do in the jewish practice that they recite a hundred such blessings a day and wow. i guess that where it stems from like literally count your blessings because when you focus on as you were saying when it, a lot of bad stuff happened but if that's all that you see and that's all that you look towards that's all you're going to notice because that's where your attention is but if you look at what you do have in a situation yeah, my string popped, but you know what? I got three more, and I'm gonna bring this house down. They're going I'm gonna have some ass shakings tonight. <laughs> you know what I mean? With these three strings, it's my gonna shit be gonna be popping nonetheless. Pop it. Yeah, that's mean? true, and I think the violin was just such a great example. Yes, my string popped. Yes, I can dwell over the fact that I lost the string, but I have three more strings in which I can play so many notes. Exactly. Because, uh, and honestly, just period, him having to learn the violin, because I took a, a that class in elementary school, we all did fourth grade, um, that's a lot of patience. For, and for you to be at the point that you're a concert right. uh, violinist, they where you walk you on stage and people clapping and standing up. Just off for rip. you existing. That took a lot of work, a lot of hard work in overcoming whatever physical disablements you may have just to get to that point so the fact that you look at those three strings and then you remember all your hard work and your training and it worked in your favor everything that you went through because it's like i know what i could do with these i got right. this you got to be a boss too you know and i think a part of being a boss everybody want to act like they're a boss ass bitch but on some real stuff it's like a real boss doesn't let anything stop them and a real boss really doesn't look at what they don't have but they look at what they can do with what they have what can yeah. i do with the options that are afforded with me i don't care about what i can't do what i can't do is long gone that is something i don't care about it's not even in my vision field because sometimes i feel like when you focus on the opportunities that you can't have you're looking at everything you can't do but then over on the other side you're not even paying attention to the lanes you can create for yourself where you can live in your purpose and it'll be so much easier. I was talking to somebody the other day about this, the fact that when you really like live in your purpose and you're grateful for everything that's happening to you and you focus on what you can do, life not only becomes so easier, but things start opening up for you that you could have never imagined that was way better than what you thought you wanted you know what i mean like mm -hmm. it doesn't have to be hard you know just focus on what you can do with what you have and not only will you open up more doors doors will pop up that you didn't even imagine you would be at or that you could see you know like what's I that like quote that. uh where it'd be like oh you ask god for something and then you're like shocked by like the plan God has for you. It's like greater than what you ever imagined. I don't know the exact quote, but I know the picture of Jesus and Teddy Bear and the little girl. <laughs> Jesus and Teddy Bear. <laughs> you know the one? No, I don't. Where the little girl has a small teddy bear in her hand and Jesus is has his hand open. And he's like, you know, give me the teddy bear. And she's like, but I love it. But behind Jesus' back is a bigger, fluffier bear. So she's holding on to what she has, but there's better in store. Something like right. That. Exactly. That's exactly okay. what I'm talking about. Memes save the world. <laughs> it is keeping account and keeping your focus on what God has put in your higher power, has put in your path that's positive. Because that like radiates positive energy. And just like as you were saying how that's when things open up. So it's like kind of like 
that energetic karma, I want to say. Right. What religion is karma? Hinduism? Buddhism? Uh, words? You do good. Yeah, and do Hinduism good. and Buddhism. Buddhism both both of them. You do good and good comes to you. You focus on good and good comes to you and manifest. That's like the energy. law of attraction. Exactly. Dealing in that, in that positive energy. So recognizing what you have even if it's a small amount and not to say that you should do it with the intention of getting more stuff but that's like a very good side effect of it (laughs) i think you can do it with the intention of getting more stuff i don't think there's anything wrong with wanting to live in abundance but i think it's the way you deal with the things that you receive and your attitude towards the abundance you receive there's nothing that, wrong in living in with the butt. Sorry, go ahead. You want to finish? No, no, no. I'm done. That's what oh, I was going to say. I, I was going to say, there's nothing wrong with living in abundance, but it's all about your attention. So if you do good in the hopes that good will come to you, then it's it's a self-serving act. I see what you're saying. You know what I mean? And the whole thing about gratitude is simply appreciating what you have. For the fact that you have it. Right. And a good side effect of that is good stuff will come to you. I guess more because you realize it, but shouldn't be, you know, self-serving. And regardless, I don't even think that's a factor in gratitude if you're really being grateful. Because I feel like the only time you would have an attitude of wanting more because of it. Is because you're being ungrateful. Mm, yep, true. You know what I mean? So, yeah. But then he continues. He says, there is no limit to what we don't have. And if that is where we put our focus, then our lives will inevitably be filled with endless dissatisfaction. I think this is the point we're trying to get at. Mm. This is the ethos that lies behind the great biblical proverb, who is rich? Those who rejoice in their own lot. And I think that goes back to saying, like, you know, I, you, they show this a lot in, like, movies and people talk about it, like, you know, in a lot of, like, life lessons and stuff. But, mm-hmm. you know, a lot of people were happier when they were just around people that they loved in their space yeah. than gaining the whole world and just being, having everything you think you need and being miserable. You know, I and agree a thousand percent. And I feel like that kind of relates back to what I'm talking about because it's just a point of gratitude. Like you have to be grateful no matter where you're at in life. Because sometimes the higher you climb and if you're hyper focused on like one thing, like making money, you can amass a whole lot of money. But because of the ingratitude you had and the people you probably stepped on because of the ingratitude you had mm. that you didn't appreciate them and you weren't grateful for them. And by the time you get to where you want to be, you look around and you're all alone and miserable. Mm. So you want to bring all that. I think it's just an energy thing. You want to bring all that energy, all the people, everything that's good. And that's a part of, for me, being grateful, like telling my friend, yo, I appreciate you, like, sis, like, I really appreciate you, like, your encouraging words, your time, your energy. Thank you so much. You know, it's even when somebody comes and helps you out, you know, or even if they don't come and help you out, just the fact that they're here in your lives and you can appreciate them because you love them, I feel like that's very important to do, even though we're hyper focused on maybe bigger goals or bigger things we want. Because I feel like when we leave the appreciation to the side is when we start becoming ungrateful Mm -hmm. for the things that we have because we're so focused on what we don't have. Right. I just said appreciating what you have and not what you could have. The people that's in your life and not what they could do for you. And just realizing that you have enough, like you are enough, like no matter what. But then he goes on and says, um, when gratitude is this, when gratitude is this well established, it is a sign of a heart that has been made right and whole. 
Gratitude can't coexist with arrogance, resentment, selfishness. The Hasidic teacher Rebbe Nachman of Breslov writes, Gratitude rejoices with her sister Joy and is always ready to light a candle and have a party. Gratitude doesn't much like the old cronies of boredom, despair, and taking life for granted. And I like the way he ended that because that's basically everything that we're saying. Like, don't take anything for granted. Enjoy what you have right now because life is a journey and the goalposts will always be moving. It's always going to be moving. So the journey is what we have. And to just be grateful and utilize what you have as the best abilities as you can right now. I like that. And I like that the ending uh, personifies gratitude because that it it kind of counterbalances with the uh the saying misery loves company right you know what i mean it's kind of the opposite where gratitude loves joy <laughs> right so if misery <laughs> loves company then gratitude, gratitude loves joy yeah. <laughs> i oh like that God. one <laughs> right Those are in my head. facts one. like but yeah so i i just really like that article because i thought it was very refreshing if you're in like a rut or you feel like you're lacking or you don't have enough, I just felt like it was a great reminder from our Jewish brothers and sisters that like you are enough, you have enough, and you can make great things with what you have now. Be grateful and rejoice. Exactly. As they say in the article, making something of beauty out of what we do have. Facts. So, yeah, that's all I have to say. Do you have anything else to say, Rain? No, I think it was very well said. So, at the end of the day, hope you got something out of this. Remember, we are experts of nothing. Just out here in these streets. We learn from you, just as you learn from us, because we are a tribe. Until next time. Continue to vibe. Hey. Hey.